Okay, today we're going to have a quick look at how to use the drawing tools in Zoo 3D to enhance some live action video. Uh, so we just create a new project. Now we don't want to use a webcam so I haven't got a webcam plugged in. If you did have a camera plugged in you can come to settings, camera settings and turn it off under there. So the first thing we're going to do now is import our video. So we go to import then import video. Uh, and this is the video that we're going to be using. There is a, a way of importing videos straight from an iPad into Z3D and we'll show you that in a different tutorial. When you're importing your video you can use these sliders here to trim the video and select just the section that you want to use. Uh, and it's a good idea to do this just uh, to reduce processing power and it's a good idea to only bring in relatively short snippets of video and then edit them together rather than trying to import one long video just everything takes a bit longer if you do it that way so in this case my video is only 10 seconds long and I want to use the whole thing so I'm just going to click on import and that comes into Zoo3D here up the top you can see it's optimizing the video this is just to create a low resolution version of the video or lower resolution version of the video that makes it play back quickly while you're working on the video on lower specification computers now our video has got some sound on but I don't want this soundtrack so I'm just going to click on that and delete it so we can watch our film now and this is what we've got so what we're going to do is try and make a monster appear coming in through this doorway to scare these children so the first thing we'll do is we'll add a video track in. So we're going to go to import and then add a blank video track in along the top there. Uh, and then we'll come down over here onto the drawing tools. And this is the tools we're going to use to overlay stuff over our video. So select the frame we want to start, which I think uh, right at the beginning will be good. And then you can either draw over the tops of your your uh, your film like this, or we're going to uh, use the uh, import image, import sprite tool to import a little picture in over the top so you can either choose one of the pictures that come with Z3D which is what we're going to do today or you can choose from elsewhere on your computer so you can download a picture a PNG file or a GIF file from the internet and uh, bring that into your project so for this tutorial I'm going to use uh, this pumpkin as our monster and click on import and he comes in to our, um, our film here and you can see this yellow strip on this video track that means we're working on this video track and we're not working on that one so you want to make sure that that's selected and you just need to click on the frame there to select it so anyway this pumpkin's in we want to make this pumpkin be as if it's coming in from behind that door so we're going to move him over here make him smaller uh, so to move him around just click on him and drag him around to make him smaller you can resize him using these uh, grab handles and if you want to do it without squishing him making him squished like that. If you go on a corner one and hold down control you can then resize him without him being squished. So I'm holding down control key on the keyboard and resizing him like that. So we want him about that big and we're going to put him so he's just peeking in from behind the door. Now don't worry that at the moment he's obviously in front of the wall and in front of this filing cabinet. Once we've finished we'll sort that out so he looks like he's behind them. So let's just worry about creating the animation first. We've got him level so he looks like he's going to be on coming in on the floor so we want him about there I think uh, and now we press this button and what this does is it uh, copies our drawing to our next frame and leaves whatever selected on the current frame so if we press that it's very similar to the capture frame button when you're capturing frames from the webcam so I'm just going to press it and you see down here if I zoom in on the timeline these are the frames that are being added to our film now as the door starts to open I'm going to move our character in a little bit so it looks like he's pushing, pushing the door open you can also rotate him to give him a bit of a, a wobble. When there's an area selected on the on the film view like this, you can use the arrow keys on the timeline. Instead of stepping through frames, they now move the selected area. So it's great for creating little animations like this. So we can just step through. So I'm just using the arrow key on the keyboard to move him across. And just keep him positioned like he's opening a door. Now the door goes backwards a bit here, so I'm going to move the character back a little bit. And then he's going forwards again, like he hesitated as he's opening the door. And the more you can get it, uh, the actions of your characters to line up with things that happen in the, in the live action video, the more realistic the end result will be. Now, I know that as the children run down this corridor, they're going to go over the front of my character, which is going to spoil the effect. 
because whilst it's relatively easy to rub out the filing cabinet and the door frame which don't move it's hard and time consuming to rub out something like a, someone's arm waving in front of the character so to solve that problem I'm going to make my monster retreat slightly so he's out of the way before the children's uh, arms would be covering him up just helps to create the uh, the illusion so we don't want that arm going over this this pumpkin so he doesn't need to move now so I'm just keeping I'm just not moving him and just pressing the button oh you can see very close to having his arm over the top of him but we've just about avoided it Okay, and that's the the first section of our film made. So if we watch that back now, it's looking good, except for the fact that obviously he's over the top of the filing cabinet. So what we need to do is rub out from all these frames the section of the filing cabinet. Now, what we want to do is pick a frame where he's over it almost all of it, here we go, this one's a good one uh, so that shows us where we need to rub out but it's really hard to see so what we can do, if we zoom out I'm going to right click on this clip and you've got set transparency and you can do this either on a clip or you can do it on the whole video track so I'm going to do it on the clip but it doesn't matter which one we do it on so you click on set transparency and I'm going to make that transparency down to something quite low something like 27% so now we can see through our pumpkin we'll change this back before we export our film but we can see through the pumpkin and see what we're trying to rub out behind him we've also got a zoom tool here so we can zoom in a bit so we're working on the area that we want to work on now we can go on to the rubber and we'll make this uh, quite small like this and now we can carefully rub out all the bits and obviously the more time and care you spend doing this the better it'll look but we'll just quickly rub out so I'm just rubbing out the pumpkin through all the bits now I'm being very careful here to not lift the mouse up I'm doing all of this in one continuous mouse action you could do it in bits and bits and pieces but the reason why I'm doing it in one continuous mouse action well what I've done is I've done the edge carefully and I'm going to leave this area for a second so I'm now lifting off the mouse so I did all of that in one continuous mouse section. If I just set the transparency of this video clip back up a bit, we can see what I've rubbed out there. But at the moment, that's only done it on that one frame. What I can now do is press this apply to whole clip button and it will apply the last drawing action I did, so in this case that rubbing out, to all the frames in the current clip. So that's now running through, if we zoom out we can see it running through, all those frames rubbing out that bit. And that does it the same place on the frame. So although the character's moving, the bit that's rubbed out stays the same and we can see there's a bit up here that I missed and there's obviously all this area here that I missed so now we can choose another frame we'll make our rubber a little bit bigger and we'll rub out again keeping the mouse down all of this section like that and again press apply to whole clip so that's now running through like this so if we zoom out again on our film watch what we've got back so far so again you can see I still missed a bit up the top there so same idea just get the rubber rub that bit out apply to whole clip and it'll do that across all our frames we zoom out on the time now we can see it working through but whilst it's doing that you can carry on so we can watch back the start of it oh and again I've missed a bit down here so we'll rub that out like that and press a light hole clip
and that's it really. We can now add in sound effects. We could put uh, put a speech bubble in over our film, so we could make him say hello or something when he comes in. If we wanted to. Um, that a bit smaller. Flip it around. And that comes in, and then we can obviously edit where that starts and finishes on our film like this. Now, at the moment, that pumpkin is still slightly transparent, so we can right-click on here, set transparency, and put it back up to 100%. You don't have to do that; that's just a it makes it much easier when you're rubbing out the character. That's it. If you've got any questions, send us an email to support at z3d.com. Many thanks.